look at the 160 pound weight class where Williams and Martinez will be fighting tonight and I know there's more to it than that. Well there's not much going on at 160 really. Pavlik's the champ. Sturm is a belt holder. Paul Williams is considered by some the best in the division though he's scarcely fought at middleweight. Uh, the, the, the view is that Pavlik really doesn't want him. Uh, so we, let's start looking at 154 pounders. These are the guys who could potentially move up and mean some money in the division. Sergio Martinez tonight has moved up from junior middleweight. Other than Paul Williams, he's the best junior middleweight in the world. So Zurich is uh, undefeated and uh, 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 has had a pretty lengthy uh, uh, belt title reign at 154 pounds. Kermit Sintron beat Alfredo Angulo on points and his only losses were at welterweight to uh, to a uh, an Antonio Margarito and there's a cloud of suspicion over all those Margarito fights now because he was later caught with the hand wraps uh, and, and of course also to Sergio Martinez who really deserved the win uh, at least two wins against Sintron when they fought. Uh, the interesting thing to me about Paul Williams, I've never quite seen this in my lifetime watching the fights, a fighter so avoided. He was supposed to fight the middleweight champ and best guy in the division, Kelly Pavlik, tonight. Pavlik pulls out. So instead, he's fighting the best junior middleweight in the world, other than Paul Williams himself, Sergio Martinez. Paul Williams would like to fight the best 147 pounders in the world, but none of them will take a fight with him seriously. They won't even entertain the idea. It's as though Roberto Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard were asked about a fight with Tommy Hearns. They said, eh, too big. <laughs> All the other fights, the one guy who would fight Paul Williams at welterweight was Antonio Margarito at a point where he looked indestructible. Paul Williams beat him. No one wants to fight this guy, Jim, so the only fights he can get are against other fighters who no one wants to fight. Margarito, Winky Wright, Sergio Martinez. Hey, Paul 6'2", has an 82-inch wingspan, could make 147 pounds. He says he still can. Seems to have an iron chin. Why doesn't everybody want to fight him, right? <laughs> so the, the, this thing of being the most avoided fighter in boxing, Emmanuel, suggests that most people don't think they can beat him. Sergio Martinez says, oh, heck yes, I can beat him, and has a plan to do so. Can he? Well... Yeah, I think he has a good chance of winning that. Simply because of the fact that Sergio Martinez has hand speed. He also can move in and out with his feet, and he would place his punches good. He has speed. See, the biggest problem most guys get when they fight with Paul Weaver is trying to out punch and punch a punch. I don't think nobody can do that. He's too physically big, and he throws too many punches from all kinds of angles, and he's left handed. But I think the style of Sergio Martinez can be the most difficult for Paul Williams because he's going to place punches to get points and move in and out and take advantage of maybe the over eagerness of Paul Williams. But overall, I think Paul Williams' size, his volume of punches, the fact that he's going to put so much pressure, being a tall guy putting pressure on a short guy, is going to eventually break Martinez down. But Martinez has a better chance than any 154 pounder, I believe, in the world. Yeah, there would seem to be two possibilities here. It could be a really terrific fight, or Williams will physically overwhelm Martinez, just as he physically overwhelms most of his opponents. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape and see why. Once again, we've already given you the numbers, but there it is. Six-year age advantage for Williams. Six, one and a half. He looks taller than that to us but it's a three and a half inch height advantage on paper. Arm length advantage of an inch and a half measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in under the 160 pound limit as you might have expected. They both weigh unofficially 166 pounds tonight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Paul Williams, Sergio Martinez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The case of course caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Sergio Martinez is a very unusual story. He was a bicycle racer and a soccer player who wandered into a boxing gym at 19. By age 21, he decided boxing was the best sport for him. His ability to learn technical skill after taking up the sport at such a late age is surprising. And his endurance base from bicycle racing and soccer is perfect for the sport, Emmanuel. I think it gives him a great advantage. Because the one thing that Paul Williams does, he wears guys down. But with the background that he has, meaning Martinez from his bats, I mean, his other sports, his bicycling and, and soccer and stuff, means that he would be there at the end. And that's something that he has to have to fight with Paul Williams. Paul Williams' pace and tempo is one of his biggest advantages.
Only one loss in 47 fights. That was many years ago to Antonio Margarito. The draw with Cintron, you were there, Max. What happened? He won by knockout. The ref called it a knockout. Then Cintron's corner convinced the referee to overturn the decision. You'll see the knockout coming out. Ref counted to 10. He was out. Fight was over. So that's the knockout. Then to protest, the, the his, uh, Cintron's corner got into the ring. Jim, that's a DQ. Then Martinez won the fight one more round. Should have also won on points. He beat him three times, Martinez did, and walked away with a draw. Thank you, referee Frank Santori. So most ringsiders understand that Martinez's real record should be 45 wins, one loss, one draw. Pretty doggone good. That's the low blow, which caused Santori to, or excuse me, holding, which caused the referee to issue a penalty. You know, as for him, Martinez wasn't angry about the loss. He took it philosophically and said, hey, I was fighting in Florida. It was foreign territory to me. I knew anything was possible. I thought I won the fight, but on to what comes next. And what comes next is Paul Williams. And there he is. Because of his height, Emmanuel, he was compared early on to Tommy Hearns. But it's really a totally different fighting style. Well, Tommy Hearns is a guy who places punches, much more devastating punches, body and head. But Paul Williams wins his own volume of punches. His knockout record is based on the fact that he's worn out opponents, not so much from punching power. But Tommy Hearns, they show him in the fights with Duran, Peter Gravis, and many other fights, that he could be a devastating one-punch fighter with top-notch fighters. If you follow the sport, you know that Williams was originally scheduled to fight Kelly Pavlik on October 3. When the staph infection on Kelly Pavlik's left knuckle flared up, then the fight was moved to December 5. Eventually, Pavlik's people said, we can't fight on December 5 either. And at that point, the Williams camp moved on and set up this fight with Martinez. And it's an interesting matchup with Pavlik, because the question would be, how well could he take a middleweight's punch, a real puncher? This is also a fascinating matchup, because how well can Paul Williams do against a super slick southpaw? He had one month remaining to prepare for the fight when he had to undergo the dramatic switch from fighting a welter, I mean, excuse me, a middleweight with a big punch to a 154-pound mover. Here we go. Two southpaws in the ring. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Goosen Tudor Promotions in association with Dabella Entertainment, Samson Boxing and HBO made possible by Tecate, Azad Watches and Caesars Atlantic City. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Commissioner Aaron M. Davis. Introducing our three judges as appointed, scoring this bout from ringside, from New Jersey, Pierre Benoist. Also from New Jersey, Lynn Carter. And from New York, Julie Letterman. Introducing our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Randy Newman. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled in a middleweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Atlantic City, New Jersey, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim, hailing from Quilmes, Argentina, now fighting out of Oxnard, California. He weighed in at 159 pounds. He is unbeaten in nine and a half years with an overall record standing at 44 wins, one loss and two draws with 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, introducing Sergio Maravilla Martinez. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trunks with orange trim, fighting out of Augusta, Georgia, by way of Aiken, South Carolina. 
He weighed in at 157 pounds. Having avenged his only defeat, his outstanding record includes 37 wins, one loss with 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Known as one of the world's most feared fighters, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the three-time world champion, introducing Paul, the Punisher, Williams. What in charge, Randy Newman, now to give instructions. Sergio. Okay, gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules of the state. We've gone over them thoroughly. I want you to remember two things. I want you to obey my commands, but number one, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the belt. Here are the two best junior middleweights in the world fighting each other at middleweight. And although Paul Williams is favored, his only loss was to Carlos Quintana. Sergio Martinez is a super Carlos Quintana. Williams trainer George Peterson taking his own sweet time to put in the mouthpiece and vacate the ring. And now the bell sounds and they're ready to go. Interesting style contrast is reflected in CompuBox numbers. Williams likes to throw as many punches as possible, averages usually more than 100 per round. Martinez throws about 44, 45 punches per round. He likes to go in and out, use the ring, fight in flurries and skirmishes here and there. Williams wants sustained action. Which one will win that argument? Well, at this stage here, Williams has created a lot of pressure. He's putting much more pressure, I think, on Martinez than Martinez has ever experienced, especially from a tall fighter. But it's very sad you run across a tall fighter that fights that way. Normally, the tall guy is the guy that's leaning back and boxing, moving around. Waiting on the opposition. Yeah. But see, Martinez look. stepped in with a good little counter right hand to the jaw. And that's very smart. Martinez is because he cannot beat this guy punch a punch but he's going to try to land clean effective punches and hope that Paul gets over anxious and get out of position and leaves himself open when he's coming forward and down he goes on the left hand of the tempo and that's five, shocking six, but it looked as though it was a combination of bad three, balance three, and the punch yeah, landing but the punch landing he couldn't see it because the guy's tall the right hands are coming from up at some such a high distance he's not used to that well we talked before the fight Oh, hard left hand by Martinez. Ripping Williams. All right, Brian, come in here. Right. Martinez go, resembles go. Quintana. Paul Williams' only loss. Martinez's only loss was to Margarito, a tall welterweight who applied pressure and ran him out of the ring. Now, let me make a point because I screwed this up in the Cotto Pacquiao fight. Pacquiao Cotto, I should say. Martinez is fighting to try to make it a 10 9 round. Not a 10-8 round in Williams' favor, but a 10-9 round if he can win the rest of the oh, round himself. Oh, that was what the up. big right hand was well, all about. I, he was trying to make it a 9-9 round with, yeah. that, with that left hand. <laughs> all right, you're tied, you're tied. Break it up. Don't punch. Come on, let me go, sir. The last thing Martinez needed in round one was to go down on a flash knockdown and give uh, Williams time, an right, extra no punch. Point. Every yeah, point is going to yeah, be precious. Yeah, right now, Williams put a lot of pressure. And I'm still looking at that left hand of his. He's just barely missing Martinez. Martinez doesn't have really a good defense for that left hand. He just he hopes he's out of range. He's not rolling a punch or anything. He's just hoping he's out right, of range. No punch on Henry's back of the head. That's crap. Let's go. Incidentally, Martinez says he's fighting this fight in memory right, of the late Vernon no Forrest. Were they friends? No. He says he never met Forrest. But when he learned about Forrest's outreach to de developmentally disabled adults and impoverished children, he developed a fondness for him, and he misses him and fights in his honor tonight. Hard right hand, and Williams goes down. And Martinez has even the round. 9-9. Oh, Brilliant. Company and counterpunch. Williams landed one big shot in the round. Martinez landed two. Wow. 
Well, just as I said before the show, the, the reason that Martinez has a chance because he's a good counter punch and he can move with his feet and hopefully get Paul just as it is over anxious and can catch him with a counter punch as he's coming in with his over anxiousness. He looked like Manny Pacquiao with that hook. But just get back and be calm. Man up on your jail. You know, okay? uh, you I don't know how Paul Weaver's going to deal with this. Now what you got to do is throw that left. Here we see the left hand and knock Martinez down. You can see a lot of it was bad ba off balance. The legs was in a bad position. Raising punch. Now you see Paul coming in and he's catching him at perfectly timed punch, and that's a serious punch right there. There was nothing to do with balance on that. Copy box numbers in round oh, one. Yeah. Williams 15 of 65. Martinez only threw 24 punches, but landed 11 and returned the knockdown. Both fighters tasted the canvas in round one. And that's a good score by Harold, by the way. Though Williams won more of the round, Martinez had him hurt on the canvas and deserves to win the round. I agree because of that. All right, all right. That's it. That's it. Bring it out. Another good counter right. Williams is going to have to get more careful about overreaching with the left hand. He's punching too far out of range. He's punching too far away. He is opening himself up to these right hooks, and Martinez is having a festival right now. He, he did not respect Sergio Martinez's punching power early. But what he really needs to respect is Martinez's speed. Look at how fast Martinez can go in and out. You're right, he's getting hooked, hit with right hooks he doesn't see coming. I believe Martinez is the fastest 154 pounder I have ever seen. Let him go, Paul, let him go. Now, some disagree with me about that, but he shows blinding speed when he wants to. Every era has its batch of slick southpaws. Martinez Boom. is the best of this era. Straight left hand landed for Martinez. I don't think, type of I don't that's think it, Paul has fully recuperated. Even though he's fighting with a lot of aggression, he still seems to be a little bit wobbly coming in and Looks very, very unshaky, right, right, un un unsteady on his legs. He's missing every yeah. punch, and Martinez is landing his. Martinez looks very strong, seems to be very much in control. And the way it's going, it looks like Martinez is headed towards possibly a knockout. And Martinez is softening up Williams with body shots in this round. Very intelligent. For a guy who took up boxing at 19, Sergio Martinez knows how to fight. But 34, that means 15 years in the game. It's plenty of time. Now, this is something Martinez will frequently do. Drop his hands and invite the opponent to come forward. So that he can counter. Paul already looks like he's fighting on heart and uh, determination. And Sergio Martinez appears to still be fighting with a game plan at this moment. He's working him over in this round. He's taking advantage of Paul Williams being out of position when he comes in. Yeah. He's in, and Paul, you know, is, is just getting in with his punches. You can see him coming. He's throwing them too far back. Suddenly it appears that for a super slick, fast counterpuncher, Williams has the wrong style. And that's exactly what Martinez told us yesterday. He said, I will use his aggression against him. All right, let him go. And he's let doing go. a great job Bring so far. Hey, hey, not for the crap. Let's go. So it'll be fascinating to see if Williams can make adjustments necessary to put himself back in control of the fight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Great job by Martinez there, holding him with one side and pounding him with the other. He won every second of that round. Puppy. Very nice, very America. nice. You had him dead. You had him dead. But don't be desperate. Keep working. Keep working. That right hook gets it all the time. You hurt him with that right hook. You hurt him a lot. Now breathe, breathe, breathe. As soon as you touch him, you hurt him. He's never been hit that way. He's never been hit by a guy who can hit well. You understand? Come on. And pick up that left. Bring, the, bring your hands in. Let him come in. Bring your hands in and let him come in. Okay, son? Bring your hands and bring out the punch on the bottom. That's it. You got to throw that one. Copy box numbers in the second round. Williams, 9 out of 60. Only 2 out of 28 jabs. He's missing his jab. Martinez, 17 out of 50, 34%. He won the round. Well, I tell you, Martinez's stamina in his background from bicycling and soccer is going to have to be a big factor for him tonight because even though I think, you know, I have him, you know, slightly winning the fight, but Williams still putting a lot of pressure on him. Well, we saw Quintana beat Paul Williams in this southpaw style, but not as good as Sergio Martinez. 
Oh, oh look at the counter punching of Martinez. But, but after he gets through, Brad Paul Williams right back at him again. Williams beat Quintana in a rematch in a first round knockout, but Quintana is an up I'm down going, fighter. Going. And here, sometimes going. a first round knockout, although it's conclusive, doesn't give you a big body of evidence to see how one fighter does against a certain kind of style. Here, Williams is again being exposed by a slick southpaw. Quick hook inside by Martinez. Missed that hook and complains that there was a headbutt. This is not the southpaw against conventional fighter problem. Two southpaws tonight. Uh, I don't know if, you know, Martin is going to be able to take this pressure. If he doesn't knock out Williams, I think he's going to, he's going to, he's going to have a rough time. The way I'm looking at him, switching back the other way. Goes, but he might not tire, Emmanuel. That's what I'm saying. He has he's, amazing stamina. Yeah, he's going to have to have it tonight. Yes, because Williams is putting pressure on. Yep, and those left hands that are just barely missing, once he slows down, they're going to start landing. If he slows down. Martinez. Now Williams stuns him with a right hook. Williams. Martinez keeps coming. Williams is a sitting duck for Martinez's right hook. Over and over, Martinez tags him with the right. Williams is still falling short as Martinez moves away. Yeah, but Williams still putting a lot, Paul has put a lot of pressure on him. I'm still looking right now at Martinez maybe landing the clean of punches, but Williams is seeming like he's got his groove on there. He's got, got his rhythm going now. Don't punch, don't punch. Let's go, let's go. Get off him. He had don't his punch. rhythm, get Emmanuel, but he's get getting beaten up. like a drum. In this round, although I see what you mean, he's still taking a lot of clean shots to the head. He's taking clean shots, that's but, it, but if, if he can keep taking those with that pressure of being a tall guy, go, go. you might see Martinez start the wheel. Yeah, but how many points down can he go on the cards? And Williams's left eye shows some blood on the outside of the eye. And as tough he's as getting hit with the right hook. And as tough as Williams is, how many right hooks can he take? Boom. Martinez land on the left. Gets in another right hook. Williams is still missing most of his punches, although getting closer. He's closing the distance, Emmanuel, as you said he would. Another round that I would have to give to Martinez. He landed many more shots. I agree. Nine over ten. Nine over ten. Yeah. Water. Water. Paul Williams. Well, Paul Williams. January 26th sees the return of 24-7. This time, instead of boxing, it's NASCAR as we'll focus on four-time Sprint Cup champion Jimmy Johnson and his teammates as they prepare for the season opening Daytona 500. And World Championship Boxing returns January 30th. It's a highly anticipated welterweight unification bout with title holders Shane Mosley and Andre Berto meeting in Las Vegas. But you can't make him fight by throwing a punch and dropping your hands. Every time you get ready to fight, he hits you upside your head. Well, okay, you don't need that. What you need to do is move your head and bring your hands high. You understand? Don't give him the fight. Happy box numbers on power shots in round three. Williams 13 out of 43. Martinez 17 out of 37. Harold, how do you have it through three? Right, don't punch, don't punch. Three up. rounds to nothing. 30 to 27, Sergio Martinez. You know, Jim, in round one, it's very interesting. In the 10 point must system, the winner in a round has got to get 10 points. I mean, you could have an even round where, you know, it would be 10 10, but somebody has to get 10 points. They each scored a knockdown. Martinez was a more solid knockdown. I gave him the round 10 to 9. Anyway, you, Martinez I, landing I, 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 the hardest, solid shots, 3 to nothing, Martinez. Hard right hook by Williams. And there's what Emmanuel was talking about. That's Williams' best punch since the first round. The signature oh, punch in the fight hey, still hey, has hey. been the right let's hook go, on Martinez, go. but I'm just still looking at the intensity and the look in the eyes of Paul Williams, even though he's being outclassed. Work you know, out, a lot out. of these fighters are just that used to that, especially foreign fighters. The pace and the tempo of the pressure is starting to wilt and breaking him down. He's still getting caught with an awful lot of punches oh, he's, coming he's, out. Getting, he's getting caught. I, I agree with that, but I just still look at if he doesn't get knocked out with that right hook, meaning Paul Williams. That's, 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 that's that's enough, that's he, it, it looks pretty good for him going down the stretch. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Well, he's three points behind on the Letterman right. scorecard. Well, he, he Maybe round, closer on some <laughs> official cards. I think that Harold's scorecard is pretty much right on the money.
including the first round. All right, all right, that's it. Don't punch. Get up. Let's go. Let him go. Let him go, Paul. Yeah, watch your head. I'm punching the back. Hey, he stops, you stop. None of this. Another right hook inside by Martinez. And a left hand shot by Martinez and a big left by Williams. Martinez holds on a little bit and bangs to the body, too. This is turning not to be a tremendous fight. You remember, we Good first right hook by Williams. Two more right hooks by Martinez. They are landing intensely. It's two of the best, it's, it's the two middleweight. best fighters in the world, that junior middleweight fighting just a few pounds north of the division. Well, we thought it was going to be two counter punches maybe for the most part, right, but Paul punch, Williams decided that's, that's not going to be the strategy tonight. So he's been responsible for this excitement, even though he's losing. He's the one that's pushing the fight. Otherwise, it could have been a real technical fight. Well, Paul Williams likes action fights. And if he wanted an action fight here, he couldn't counter punch. He had the lead because he that's knew that's that Martinez that's would that's counter punch. Right. Paul Williams' head is up in all those exchanges and still right there for the, any kind of punch, particular break, right hook. Break, break. And the damage is mounting around Williams' left eye. There's blood in the orbit. Hard left hand by Williams. Martinez grabs that's and right. holds. That was, I was figuring that's what happened to him. Grabs and holds on. That hit Martinez right on the chin. He's, and, yes, but, and he held immediately. He, Martinez is hurt. I could see that left hand from the first round was just barely missing. And Paul is badly cut. That's what I'm talking about, man out. Man up on that jab, okay? You got to fight him. You got to cut him. No one is working on his eyes still. You got me? Yeah, you got to cut him. I got you. <laughs> you got to 17 fight him, seconds go by before they you touch the eye. You do it that round. But let two and three go. You trying to throw one jab and you trying to throw it from across the street. But that's not going to work. You got to throw the jab and you got to throw the hook. Okay? Listen to what I'm saying. You got to throw the jab and you got to throw the hook. And you got to come back with the jab. You need more than one punches. You got to throw numbers, Paul. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if you want to do this, you got to fight smart. You want to win this, you got to fight smart. And fighting the smart is manning up on them punches. Yeah, it right there, see was a headbutt by Martinez that really aggravated to already bleeding cut eye. A lot of the damage has been done by Martinez's right hooks. Williams landed a huge left hand to punctuate the last round. And the way Martinez is fighting, it looks like he's still hurt from that left hook. And, you know, I don't know if he has that street toughness about him that Paul Williams has. And that's why even though Williams was losing, in my mind, I saw him winning because I'm looking at beyond not the round but the overall fight guys two weaknesses in paul williams one he cuts he's susceptible to cuts the other is he hasn't sat down on his punches and been a real good puncher throughout most of his career here at middleweight you see him punching emmanuel with real authority but i think it's just the fire in him it just, it just you know the fight inside of a man is what really makes it to winners and then he has seemed to be much more fight and in, 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 in determination inside Williams landed a good right hook to the heart of Martinez in their last exchange. Martinez seems to have gotten his legs back from that big shot at the end of the fourth round. But the momentum of the fight is shifting. Williams is beginning to be the more threatening of the two. After Martinez had a brilliant first three rounds. Martinez seems to be trying to just get through this round, avoid damage, maybe catch his breath a little bit. And Paul Williams has slowed down on we tad too. He hasn't been fighting with intensity yet that you would think after having Martinez hurt. But that left hand is still just raising him, just barely missing him. And the more fatigue that sets in, you're going to see that left hand land more frequently. Of Paul Williams. And now Martinez fires three more right hooks and clocks Williams with a left. And Williams fires back, oh. and they're trading shots. What a savage exchange in the middle of the ring. Amazing. Well, the last thing Martinez wanted to do was trade shots with Williams, but he got through there. Accurate, hard punches. By both guys in that exchange. Back and forth, a true exchange, as you say, Jim. I'm here, let him go, don't punch, get out. 
step back. One step back. And now Martinez's left eye is beginning to swell a little bit too. From Williams' his right hooks. And his jab. More trading shots. Tremendous Williams fight. got the better of that exchange. And, and Martinez backs off. Martinez getting hit there because he fights with his hands down. I don't think Martinez intended that, but it's not a bad thing to do. No, it takes a lot of energy when you get down like that, trying to get yourself up. Especially a guy almost six foot two with thin legs. Uh, you say we're almost six foot. That man is six foot two all over. If there ever was it about a six foot two. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Breathe, 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 Sergio. Breathe. 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 Listen, Sergio. You are working very well. Don't go in on the exchanges. Don't go to the exchanges. Don't stay there. Don't get heated up. When you catch him, when you catch him and he wants to exchange, move. Get away. Get out of there. Here we see a tremendous exchange, which was typical of the fight right here. Both guys fighting with so much determination, getting hit with clean punches and coming right back right away before the opponent can get his momentum to go on. Rough night in Atlantic City for Paul Williams and Sergio Martinez as we go to the sixth of the schedule 12. Wild first round in which both men were down. Martinez seemed in control in the second, third rounds, hammering Williams with right hooks. In the fourth round, Williams caught Martinez with a big left toward the end of the round. In the fifth round, they exchanged freely, but Williams seemed to be getting the better of it. And after all of my Throwing about Martinez's stamina, I do believe Williams' pressure has taken something out of him, uh, yeah, Emmanuel. Nobody can put pressure like a tall fighter. A tall fighter putting pressure. You can't grab him and tie him up and pull him by the head the way you can with a shorter guy coming in the way Ali used to do. Right, right, the right. worst pressure in the world is a tall oh, oh, fighter that puts pressure on him. The They're banging heads again. You saw Martinez ducking away and grimacing. Williams missing the jab. A lot of talent on display here, obviously, Jim, but also a lot of will. You mentioned them getting their hearts hooked, but neither guy got their heart took. And that's why we're getting these excellent exchanges. Because when one guy gets hit, his inclination is to throw right back. Williams still seems to be too open to Martinez's right, right oh, particularly the hook. Williams is still wide open. I just think his determination is keeping him in the fight, making it close, but... But, you know, it's still, uh, his, his head is up. Hard right hook by Williams. That's it, that's as, Martinez, as Martinez has become more stationary, it becomes more of a grinding fight. But you know what you said back right, before, right, the two punch, best junior middleweights in the world, and that's what they're fighting like tonight. I mean, this, even though Martinez is winning, but what a fight is there. We're witnessing a special fight. And generally, this... You know, you get the two best guys in a division going at it. Special things happen. Well, we're witnessing a special fight partially because they are two special athletes. Not all boxers and not all skilled boxers are great athletes. Both of these guys have amazing athletic quality. And that's showing up in the ring. They do things that other guys can't. All right, Brian, don't punch. Let him out. Let him out. That's it. I work out, I work out, no punch, just get out. Let's go, let him go. That le left Take hand of uh, Williams didn't here. do that much effect because of the fact that Martinez was rolling away from the punch. It looked good. In fact, Martinez's left right there was probably better. Yes. It's another right hook inside by Martinez. Doing a good job of slipping Williams' punches there. Good combination for Williams there. Pretty close round, but Williams' busier style and more punches are beginning to make their mark. 
December 8th, don't miss the next Joe Buck Live. Among the guests, Pedro Martinez, Brian Urlacher, Michael Strahan, and Floyd Mayweather. December 22, Real Sports returns with its annual year-end edition. Join Brian Gumbel and all the correspondents as they discuss their most interesting and revealing stories from 2009. <laughs> Keep working, keep working with the lead hand. No, after half about, you know that it's going to slow down. You see that, that last minute, it was a bit slow, right? You got to finish off strong. You got to finish off strong. Move, and then when the last minute is up, go and attack. Martinez's Spanish trainer is Juan Leon Diaz, and as you heard, he talks a blue streak. Kampibach numbers in round six. Paul Williams finally fought a Paul Williams round. He threw 90 punches by Kampibach's count, landing 32. Martinez was 18 out of 49 in return. Harold, how you got it through six? I catch him. Three rounds apiece. 57, 57. I got it even. Sergio Martinez on my card won the first three rounds. Then Paul oh, Williams tightened it up, up. Started to come forward. He's the aggressor. You gotta give him credit for effective aggressiveness. And he's dropping that left hand down on Martinez. And the thing is, is that Martinez now is fighting going back all the time. He, in other words, he doesn't move oh, get in up, get and get, up, get you, you know, I'll land that right over the top of the strong left hand like he did in the first three rounds. He's fighting moving backwards. Williams, you know, evened it up in the last three rounds. 57, 57. Yeah. That's a good point, Harold, because Martinez's punches were doing damage in the first three rounds when he was going forward more resolutely to throw them. Throwing them as he backpedals, no power. And part of that might be uh, he's a little discouraged because as much as he, he dropped Paul Williams and had him badly hurt, there's Paul Williams firing right back. Pure physicality beginning to make its mark for Williams. Yeah, I think physically and mentally he's, he's draining Martinez. I noticed Martinez when he went back at the end of the last round, I saw a look on his face of like, hey man, I've never been through this before. And I don't know if I can deal with it. Well, Williams hadn't been through this before no, either. No, not right. This is the roughest I think either one of them will fall. The only thing is I just myself feel there's a little more toughness mentally in Paul Williams. Yes, you, you get the feeling that Paul Williams' toughness plays into his ability to absorb a punch. You know, as though his he went down from the shot but didn't get stopped and hasn't gone down again because he's determined not to. And he was seriously hurt too. Good uppercut by Martinez. Misses the second uppercut. But Williams is just making Martinez miss a lot of punches too now, which is amazing. He's been oh, trivial and twisted in turn. Williams has improved dramatically since the second round when he seemed lost at sea. Gradually making adjustments as the fight goes on. decision whether to stay out there at the end of Williams punches or simply go inside and try to stay inside of him. But today, right now he's having a real problem because even when he lands his pitch shot which is the right hook Williams comes right back and off the time Williams lands his right hook at the same time. At the beginning Martinez was always able to get away. Not now. What you do doing still yet? Yeah. You throw in one punch and you reach in back. Yeah. You're not putting anything up to your head. You understand to block those shots. But listen, this is what you got to do. You got to go to this guy's body. What you're not doing. You had he's just as tired as you are. Matter of fact, he's more tired than you are. But what you got to do, you got to. Come on, son. Instead of throwing the lead hand, throw the left. Throw the left. And then keep faking him. Keep faking him. All right, son. There's the water. Don't stay on the inside. Don't stay on the inside. Keep moving. Keep moving. And lead it in the second hand. So where would the toughness come from, which seems to be making a difference? Well, remember, Williams went into the ring as a 12-year-old. Ultimately, he backed away from boxing as a teenager, then came back to it when he was introduced to George Peterson 
who has been his trainer and his confidant ever since. Martinez didn't take up boxing till he was 19, didn't get serious about it till he was 21. That's a difference in orientation, which may be the difference here. Yeah, that's but that just, you know, you're going to have two individuals They can both be the same brothers, and you just have one guy can be just tougher than the other. Sometimes it comes from the ba background of the childhood, but sometimes it just ends some people. Although, right, guys, right, two, two points here. That's one, that's Sergio Martinez is showing a lot of toughness. And oh, two, yes. my impression in the corner, when you watch their faces in the corner, is that Paul is really suffering. Sergio looks much fresher. Right, get out, get out. Go punch, go punch. That's it. We'll see how that plays out. Better part of five rounds to go. There's one thing we're sure. These are two tremendous fighters right here. And, you know, both guys are showing hard You see why skills. nobody wants and to fight them. Yes, both of them, really. Two of the most avoided fighters in the sport. You see why. You know what's the difference in the last two rounds is, to me, it's been Paul Williams' defense a lot of time. He's been getting away from punches and slipping that he wasn't getting away from earlier. It's a tradition that goes back to Sugar Ray Robinson and Jake LaMotta in boxing and even longer than that. Two avoided fighters, two fighters who find it difficult to get fights, wind up fighting each other and creating these kind of fights. Hard right hand by Williams. There's blood coming out of Paul Williams' mouth now. Williams is dripping blood in the middle of the ring. And that has begun in this round. Martinez trainer asked him to throw lead lefts in this round. Yeah. Haven't seen one. There's one to the body. We got a right There's hook another to the head one. for it. And now he got the right hook in because of the lead left but to the Paul body. Williams comes right back right after that. This is a slip, not a knockdown. The dominant part of the Martinez thinks he's found something with this little left hand to the body. And it gets the right hook in again. Three of them. We're just looking at the way Paul Williams is built, you would think that he's susceptible to body shots. Big right hook by Martinez. Bob Williams head around on its axis. But Paul seems to have taken the punch that's okay. It, that's it, that's it. What a shot. Again, a little left hook leads, or left hand leads to the body by Martinez, followed by the right hook upstairs. Left to the body. Uh, that was a good round for Sergio Martinez by my lights. I work this guy's body. Why will you not work his body? You're going underneath a lot of things you're throwing. Okay? A lot of this stuff that he's throwing, you ducking, but you won't answer back. But you send it open, but you want you're not answering back. Paul, oh, listen, you got to work with both hands. You got your jab working, but you won't come back with the hook. You got him. Respira, you know the pulmones. Breathe down, breathe down. Feel your, feel your, feel your lungs. Bien, bien, bien. Very nice, very nice. You're looking very good. Now this is our second win. Now. That's it. Very good. Just like we started at the beginning. Just like the first round. Here we see the signature punch of Martinez, which has been all night. It's mainly only punch landed that tremendous right hook, especially when they get in close quarters. That's been the big weapon in the fight for Martinez. All right, Frank, Frank, Williams get out, get out, get has out, landed get some get left out. hands. But Williams' most punches in the last two rounds have been, believe it or not, a jab. He has uh, been doing pretty good with the jab, but he hasn't been able to get his range with the left hand. And he heard George Peterson keeps asking him to throw body shots and follow his jab with the hook. Well, at this point, if he's not doing it, forget about it. Just try to work the strategy off of what he's doing, because he's not going to change. And incidentally, guys, the reason Sergio Martinez is enjoyed that success last round has he, he could you can credit his toughness for it because he's still there in the face of paul williams resilient assault paul williams is resilient of course and mounted that counter offensive in the last several rounds but martinez answers right back yeah you may also credit credit the subtle tactic of that little left to the body that he started using midway through the last round because it seemed to set up the right hook there's another one See? Keeps trying to throw the left to the body and fire the right hook behind it. Now right hand to the body by Martinez. The 
shorter fighter obviously has the better chance to land body shots. Martinez leaning now a little bit on his left side, you know, right in the path of a Paul Williams straight left hand, which Williams has been throwing. They trade body shots. Both guys firing to the body at the same time. Hard right hook by Williams. Martinez missing with his. This is a tremendous fight, and both guys are getting hit with clean punches here. And then neither one of them, after they get hit, we go into a defensive mode. They both will come right back with a punch. Considering the level of skill at which this fight is being contested, it's an incredible fight. This is the kind of fight your mother hopes you're never in. Make your dad proud, though, Jim. That's it, that's it. Williams trainer George Peterson was utterly dismissive of Martinez. Not sure whether he was trying to build his fighter's confidence or get under Martinez's skin. But he said, you know, we've got no problem here. This will be an easy knockout. Paul will overwhelm him in one or two rounds. Uh-uh. This is a great fight with nine rounds in the books. Sergio, listen, you've got to throw that left up top. You throw it the left to the body, but then remember to throw it up top. Throw it up top. What do you give in the body? He give you all you want in the body, but you're not using it. Deep breath. Okay. Deep breath. Let's take a look at the dominance of Sergio Martinez's right hook. And you can see that 89 of his punches, the ones to the top right or the top uh, uh, left side of Williams' head and on the chin, most of those, almost all of them, frankly, are right hooks. 54 left-hand shots to the right side of Williams' body. And then the rest, you know, a few jabs and left hands here and there. But by and large, left to the body, right upstairs. That has been the Martinez attack. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, okay Jim, five rounds to four. 86, 85, Paul Williams. You know, Jim, uh, like you said, Sergio Martinez had a heck of an eighth round, landed that big right hand. He may have hurt Paul Williams, but in the ninth round, he started to look like a tired fighter, and Paul Williams started to back him up, walk him down, get him with the left jab, and drop the right and drop the left hand down on him. So I thought Paul Williams pulled that round nine to pull ahead by one round, five to four, Paul Williams. Hard left hand by Martinez. Harold, would you agree that there have been some very close rounds here and this might be a tough fight to score? Absolutely, Jim. There's another straight left hand by Martinez and suddenly he changes up again, firing left hand leads into the face of Williams and seems to have shocked Williams with this new tactic. Good adjustment. He's, he's doing very well this round here, but he's going to have to do it the rest of the round if you don't like him out because Paul is going to be right in his face after every exchange, right back. Paul Williams is, uh, you don't think of him this way. He's not built that way, but he's a, he's a pit bull. Hey, he's no a, punch, he's no tenacious. Punch. Hey. No punch. And he took some shots from Sergio Martinez in this round that would have no, let go, let stopped the lesser fighter. That's it. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Well, it remains to be seen whether the two big left hands in the first minute will be enough to win the round for Martinez. So far, Williams hasn't answered with anything as spectacular. No, no so far, this round still is Martinez's round. He's, he's landed a lot of clean punches compared to what Paul, Paul hasn't landed anything. Good body shot right. by Martinez, and he backs away. Great Another left, left hand left shot. Him. That's a new weapon Suddenly, now. Williams is open to the left hand. That hadn't happened all night long. And he can't afford tackles. He's getting bad enough with the right hooks. 
now that Martinez is throwing the left hand, he's got two punches he's got to look out for. He has landed three solid lefts in the round, which seemed to have him winning the round. Another right jab for Martinez, countering beautifully. Big left hand by Martinez. That left hand by Martinez was on the chin and shifted Paul Williams' feet about a foot, and Paul Williams keeps coming. Well, Martinez is not a power puncher. That's it, that's it, that's it. In his 44 wins, he only has 24 KOs. He's quite accustomed to going the distance to earn his victories. Although there have been moments when he's been loading up big shots and clearly trying to knock Paul Williams for a loop in this fight. Ah. Feels like an even fight. Okay. Deep breath, water. Deep breath. You're looking good, but let me tell you, let's get back some of that body, Paul. The body's in, man. You know, you want to go out with a head shot. Let's get the body. You hear what I'm saying? Look. Work out. It's your turn. Work, work down. down. Work to the body and then to the left. The Come left on. up top. Come on, babe. Let's go. You got it. You got his range. You got your range. Work it. He's dead. Here we see a beautiful left hand shot from Martinez right on the chin. Something that we didn't see earlier in the fight at all. And here we once again, we see the left hand again. That's turned out to be the key punch right now for Martinez. In fact, the key punch of the entire fight for the last round. In fact, power shots in round 10 by CompuBox count. Williams, 8 of 53. Martinez, 16 of 40. We go to the 11th round. If you're in either corner, knowing that the fight is close, it's going to be very interesting to see how these guys fight the last two rounds. Yep, championship rounds here. We've already told you many times, the two best 154-pound fighters in the world fighting at 160 in a non-title fight. It's been a hellacious battle from the get-go. And in this era of multiple belts, etc., these are two truly championship-caliber fighters. Crowd is chanting, Paul, Paul, Paul. Trying to lift Williams. Williams is chasing and trying to get at Martinez. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's enough, that's enough. They trade shots there. suppose it was a 15-round fight. You know, I, I think, I know Paul Williams has an advantage in terms of the Good punch left stat. hand by Martinez. I, I think Mar I would rather have been Sergio Martinez so far throughout the majority of rounds in this fight. I think he's landing the cleaner, and more he, effective shots. Yeah, much more damaging punches. Cleaner, effective punches. If you look at that, it's, he's definitely landing that. He's nearly exhausted, though. As he falls to his knees in front of Williams with a minute to go in the 11. You're right, Jim. He looks absolutely exhausted. Oh, I'm here, I'm here. Don't punch. He's one of the fittest fighters to be found on the planet. But the constant right, pressure right, of dealing right. with Paul Williams' long body seems to have worn him out. There's another right hook and another left hand and another right hook and another left hand and another two right hooks and another left hand. And Sergio Martinez is determined to try to win this fight. Williams is under enormous pressure now. In the 11th round of a, of a war, these two are throwing punches like that in the middle of the ring. And look at the blood from Williams' eye. Sergio Martinez is putting up a tremendous battle. Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward Hard fought downstairs in this building, uh, but they didn't contest their fights on this level of skill. Big right hand to finish the round for Martinez. It looked like he won the 11th to me. Sit, Sergio, sit. 
That's it, baby. Chau, chau, chau. Put water, put water on it. Very good, Sergio, very good. The only thing is that when, when you kneel down, he was knocked down. He was knocked down. You've got to keep working. Keep that working. Give it all. We got, we got it, Doc. We got it. We got this. We, we got it. We got it. We got it. Last round, okay? Deep breath, Paul. Okay, open your mouth. Deep breath. Don't stay on the inside. Get, stay close. Work it. And fake him. Work his body and then put his left up top. You understand? All right, let's go. Put the soul in it. Put your soul in it. The fight is yours. In the 11th round, Williams landed 35 and Martinez landed 32. That's the high number of connected punches for both fighters in the fight. Emmanuel, what should Paul Williams do this round? Just what he's doing, put pressure. The last round, I really had it even. Maybe that last flashy right hook of Martinez may have won it. But uh, I had the last round of my score oh, even. Oh, oh, oh. So this round, oh, if oh, I'm oh, judging, oh, probably oh. would be the round that's going to decide the winner of this fight. Paul Williams got to just what Hard left doing. hand by Martinez. All three judges oh, hey, are hey, hey. American. Martinez is thing. from Let's Argentina. Go and has lived most of his life in Spain since he started boxing. So remember that as we get ready for a decision. You know, judges, some judges look for clean, effective punches. They would go for Martinez. A lot of judges look for the aggressive that's fighter that's who's that's pushing that's the fight. That's so that's it's going to be a very difficult fight, depending on who the judge and what the judge looks for. Whatever happens here. Clean punch of the bin with Martinez. But for his aggressiveness and effectiveness, I mean, determination, that would go to Williams. Whatever happens here, the question is to who these guys should fight next. By Martinez. He's landing the flashier punches again. Down goes Martinez, and it's going to be ruled a slip. It is not going to be ruled a knockdown. Pretty close call. Oh. Right hand by Martinez. And a nice left uppercut by Williams, who both guys landed great shots at the same time. Williams must know that Martinez's legs are nearly gone. Another solid left hand inside by Martinez. What a fight. Crowd is standing. We'd like to stand, too, in honor of two guys who have fought 12 brilliant rounds. What a way to finish the year. seconds to go and neither man is having a rousing round both men appear near exhaustion although Williams bleeding appears to have a little more left oh, 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 stop on. this fight has been dramatic from the first round when both guys went down and the 12th and final round is still up in there the same way they started is the way they're finishing up Remains to be seen whether Sergio Meet Martinez gets this decision, but he certainly got respect. And whatever the decision here, Jim, the question as to who Paul Williams or Sergio Martinez should fight next, each I other. have an answer. Each other. Absolutely. Brilliantly said, Max. All right. What a show by Martinez and Williams. Both getting their due from the crowd. Let's take a look at the highlights. Round one. First, Martinez goes down on a glancing left hand, bad balance, Martinez was on the canvas. Now, fighting from the deficit, in the closing seconds of the round, he lands a giant right hook and knocks Williams down. Ultimately, Harold Letterman gave that round to Martinez 10-9. In round four, the strong left hand by Williams began his comeback in the fight after it appeared to us Martinez had won the first three rounds. Round five. Good exchange, and they traded punches viciously in the middle of the round. Williams seemed to get the best of it, ultimately landing more punches. But 
Sergio Martinez wouldn't take no for an answer. And in round eight, throwing left-hand body shots, he suddenly revived his right hook and started pounding Williams again with right hooks as he had done through most of the first three rounds of the fight. And then in round 10, suddenly, Martinez unveils straight left hands and lands them. A series of them on the face of Williams. Round 11, a war as the fighters landed 67 power shots in this round. And this exchange ultimately ended with another big shot from Martinez. So who gets the win as three American judges prepare to render the verdict? Harold, how did you finally score it? <laughs> Jim, seven rounds to five, 115, 113, Paul Williams. I, I just thought he finished this fight stronger. I think Martinez tied in 11 and 12, and I just think that Paul Williams outpunched him, but it was very, very close. Don't you think Martinez landed the cleaner shots he, and the clearer he landed, shots? He landed some really hard shots. I thought Paul Williams got in some hard shots. I just thought Paul did a little bit more to win it in the championship rounds. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. and find out what the official scorers thought. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Julie Letterman scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Lynn Carter, who scores about 115 to 113, and Pierre Benoist, who scores about 119 to 110, in favor of the winner, Paul the Punisher Williams. Well, Samson Lukovic, who you see on screen there, is Martinez's advisor, and he is very angry. 119 to 110? Who's kidding whom? That is a travesty. There's no way 119 to 110 belongs in this fight for either fighter. Ridiculous. 119 to 110. Judge Pierre Benoist of New Jersey is the one who scored at 119 to 110. I say he's blind. It was a very close fight. And the victory goes to Paul Williams by the scores that you see on the screen. So Williams gets the win, and Martinez probably has some new admirers, but also collects the second loss of his career. Final copy box numbers, Williams with his volume style, throwing 40, or uh, landing 45 more, while throwing 340 more punches. Martinez landing at a significantly higher connect percentage, and by my lights at least, he landed the harder shots. Jabs in the fight. And not much difference there, although Williams threw nearly twice as many. Again, Martinez landing at a higher rate. And total power punches, again, the big difference there. Paul throwing nearly 200 more. Martinez landing at the higher rate. Let's go to Max Kellerman now with Paul Williams. Congratulations, Paul, on, first of all, engaging in a classic fight. What are your thoughts right now? You know, you know. A good fight, man, you know, bring out the war. Like I said, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't gonna try to boss up and try to make it a war, make them fight me, you know, that's what we had to do. Early on, you scored a knockdown. By the end of the round, he scored a knockdown that seemed to really hurt you. Were you hurt? No, you know what I'm saying? I was, he stung me like I stung him and stuff, you know. I had to get up and, and show what a warrior made out of, you know what I'm saying? That's part of my business, first time I've been knocked down and stuff, but you know. I've been out there before in the gym, so I had to get up and show what a true champion made out of those. I had to put it on. No one would question your heart uh, until now, certainly not after a performance like this. But in terms of the matchup itself, he was catching you time and again with big right hooks that seemed to have an effect on you, even though you kept coming. What was the effect of those hooks? I mean, they let me know that I was in there with a uh, true champion and stuff, but. You know, through all the training and you know, those switching up and, and uh, kind of kind of threw me off a little bit. And I started getting him a rhythm around the fourth round. But you know, he's a he's a warrior, man, and I liked it that you know what I'm saying because I know he's gonna get some big shots in, and I'm gonna get some big shots in too. Did you think you had to pull out the late rounds to win the fight? Oh, most definitely. My man was telling me, you know, what I'm saying you gotta, hey, if you want it, you gotta go get it. And so you know, what I'm saying he's like, you gotta make him fight. You gotta keep throwing punches stuff. I couldn't get the body work like I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? But I just, just did what I had to do. You know, to so keep throwing and make him fight. Man. 
Do you have any thoughts at the moment of wanting to do it again? Oh, if Mr. Peterson, Al, and Dan, and HBO want to see it again, hey, I'm all in for it. Congratulations. Amazing fight, Paul. Sergio Martinez, likewise, congratulations to you on engaging in this modern classic of a fight. Your thoughts. Muchas gracias. Y la verdad que tuve la suerte de hacer un, un buen combate, un lindo combate, y de tener enfrente al boxeador más temido, pero sin tenerle ni un poquito de miedo. Thank you very much. It was a great opportunity to have the most feared fighter in front of me, but I had no fear at all in this bout. Did he hurt you when he knocked you down in the first round? Cuando caí recibí un golpe cerca de la nuca y por eso pisé mal y caí, pero fue un golpe lícito, fue un golpe bien, pero no, 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 no estuve sentido ni nada, no estuve dañado. It was a good punch. I was hit in the nape, but I wasn't really hurt, and my feet were off. Did he hurt you at any later point in the fight? No, no, no. En ningún momento estuve en aprietos. Eh, sí que es un boxeador que trabaja, pero en ningún momento estuve en knockout, en ningún momento. No, no. I was never really hurt. Uh, I know he's a boxer who works a lot, but at no moment in time was I hurt. It seemed late in the fight, after you were pushed down, you had a real problem getting up as though you were completely exhausted. Can you tell us what you were feeling as the late rounds came in this fight? No, no, no estaba exhausto. Eh, estaba intentando dosificar mis fuerzas porque quería, quería acelerar y apretar en el último asalto. Solo era eso. No, I, I wasn't exhausted. The only, only thing I wanted to do was uh, dose my, my strength, if you will, because I wanted to pick up the, the, the pace in the latter rounds. I thought it was, uh, you won the fight close. Uh, many people thought it was close. I hear ringside people talking about Paul won it close, you won it close. What do you think of the 119-110 scorecard? I'm asking Sergio Martinez. Prefiero que lo digan ustedes. Eh, ¿Qué es lo que fue ese, ese fallo? Yo creo que eso es un fallo, es un error. I prefer that, that you call it and you tell the truth, but I think it, it was an error. It was a true error. Do you want to fight Paul Williams again? Por supuesto, por supuesto. Es un gran boxeador. Of course, he's a great fighter. And we should, we should have a rematch. Congratulations, Sergio, and thank you for that fight. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Max. Emmanuel, will both fighters be better for this experience tonight, or is this the kind of fight that will take something out of both of them? I think it has taken a lot out of both of those, because I don't think they would have learned that much or got better, but skill-wise, I think it has taken a lot out of that. It was, that was a brutal fight. I mean, from the beginning to the end, and as controversial as that one judge's decision was, sometimes you can see that, because we have some judges, I say, that look for clean punches, and some judges are just locked in their mind, whoever's the aggressor, whoever's the aggressor. And that's, that's right. the way some guys are, and so they saw it that way. But it, it's always when you have decisions, you're going to have possibly controversial. All right. Uh, let's take a look now at upcoming boxing events here on HBO. One week from tonight, a big year in the ring ends with a boxing after dark triple header. Juan Diaz and Pauli Malinaji renew acquaintances after this past summer's controversial decision for Diaz in his hometown of Houston, Texas. That night also features a heavyweight showdown. Vitaly Klitschko defends his belt against Kevin Johnson. Filling out a great card, Victor Ortiz squares off against Antonio Diaz. Ortiz looking to bounce back after suffering a disappointing loss last June. It's a huge night of boxing on December 12. 2010 gets off to a fast start with Boxing After Dark January 23, featuring some of the sport's youngest, brightest talents in action on the same night. Puerto Rican sensation Juan Manuel Lopez takes on Steven Luevano. And Cuban 2004 gold medal winner Yuri Orcas Gamboa faces Rogers Matagua. That's January 23 on Boxing After Dark. One week later on January 30, it's a welterweight unification matchup. It's been nearly a year since Sugar Shane Mosley's ninth round stoppage of Antonio Margarito. Mosley has Margarito in trouble on the rope. And there's the knockdown. Now, the future Hall of Famer takes on undefeated welterweight title holder Andre Berto in the biggest fight of Berto's developing career. Experience versus youth, which will win out on January 30. It's a jam-packed calendar of fights coming up on HBO's World Championship Boxing and Boxing After Dark. Log on to HBO.com for more details.
Well, back live at ringside, and Max Kellerman has made his way down from the ring. You made your point in your interview with uh, Martinez that you felt he deserved the win. I'm with you, which means that the announced team is divided two to two. Letterman and Stewart thinking Williams won. Uh, Max and I both believe Martinez probably deserved this decision. Uh, what do you see happening from here? Well, first, let me just say, I, I like to avoid calling out judges by name because maybe it's possible that, as, as you and Emmanuel were discussing it, a judge consistently prefers a certain style. And so in a fight where you consistently get the same kind of round, that judge goes that way. But I'm taking names. Enough. We've seen this this year in Pauli Malinaji and Juan Diaz. We saw it when Ali Funiga was robbed uh, a week ago against Joan Guzman. We saw it again tonight. There is no way Pierre Benoist can tell me that Sergio Martinez only won one round. That's a disgraceful scorecard. That said, because as a boxing fan, you get used to not wanting to let these kind of things ruin an otherwise spectacular night. What a fight. This is what happens when the two best junior middleweights in the world, the two best fighters in a weight class, regardless of the fact that they were fighting a little north of that weight class, get together, especially when they have crowd-pleasing styles that complement each other. I wish that there were more fanfare going into a fight like this, that there were a 24-7 for Sergio Martinez and Paul Williams, because they deserve it, boxing fans deserve it, and Jim, casual sports fans, who would, who would otherwise be boxing fans, I know, would love to see this kind of stuff. And like it so often is the case when we see a truly great fight like, fight like this, uncontaminated by title belts. All right, it's been great to be with you tonight from Atlantic City. Join us one week from tonight for HBO's final boxing show of 2009. It's a triple header beginning with Victor Ortiz return to the ring against Antonio Diaz. Also, the rematch between Juan Diaz and Pauli Malinaji. Then from Switzerland, it's same day coverage of Vitaly Klitschko's heavyweight title defense against American finesse fighter Kevin Johnson. And if you missed any part of tonight's show, you can catch it again at the dates and times listed below. Next on HBO, excuse me, next on HBO, it's Liam Neeson starring in Taken. And now for our entire HBO crew, this is Jim Lampley saying so long from Atlantic City, New Jersey. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.